Okay, ready? Three, two, one. Welcome, Welcome to Roost on Record. Welcome back, fam. This week on Roost on Record, we're going to dive into a more serious topic that affects every single one of us, and even more so during this pandemic. But don't worry, there's still going to be lots of laughs and lots of embarrassing stories. Okay, so when people say Ruth, it would be a lie to say that the first thing many people associate our school with isn't either, you know, the genius factory or like the farm school. And as students of Ruth, when we're constantly surrounded by like gifted students and we always have this pressure to perform well, we can often find ourselves burnt out or stressed and not sure how to balance our studies. And so today we're going to be talking about the three big S's schools, studies, and stress, and maybe some ways we can approach it. I'm Yunji. And I'm Sambo. And today we have two very special guests, so please introduce yourselves. Hi, I'm Emily. And I'm Zayel. Thank you so much for joining us today. So let's just get right into it. Oh yeah, and disclaimer, when we say we're going to give advice about how to deal with stress, in no way, shape, or form does that mean we're good at dealing with stress. Yeah, like I for one, I'm still working on how to deal with stress. I feel like not a lot of people graduate high school like knowing how to deal with stress. And also another disclaimer, in this episode, we might be like, oh, James Ruiz is so stressful, but we just want to make it clear that James Ruiz is an amazing school. Yeah. Like genuinely. Yeah, like hundreds It's like you grow so much from being at James Ruiz and being surrounded by such incredible people and also the teachers and just like the school executives. Yeah. Okay, maybe we can start off by maybe establishing some things we get stressed about or like some things that can trigger mm-hmm. stress. I feel like definitely like academics is something that Mm -hmm. school, like studying is definitely something that stresses us out. And personally for me, with deadlines, having deadlines and like exams, that's always Mm -hmm. something stressful. Um, What about you guys? What other things do you think stress you guys out? Um, I guess it's the same thing. Like for me, it's just the work overload, Mm -hmm. especially when you get a bunch of assignments and it's all piling up. Like if they're all clumped together and the deadlines like really close together, that's when the stress kicks in for me in terms of academics. I mean, there's a bunch of other stuff that I do get stressed about. Like, you know, you have your stuff outside, like your extracurriculars, or you might like have out of school stuff yeah family problems whatever mm-hmm. yeah yeah definitely what about you Leo? I think I'm um, pretty much the same definitely the deadline do add that pressure and definitely exam week and having <laughs> multiple exams in one yeah, week 100% <laughs> Samber? I remember in the junior years we were like how many hours did you sleep last night like did you pull an <laughs> all-nighter and it was all almost like you're better than everyone else if you did pull an all-nighter so I think that kind of built on to the stress yeah I'm not gonna lie back in year five I thought like sleeping after midnight was like the biggest flex of my life I'd be like wait what time did you sleep and, and then they'll be like like I slept at like 9 I'm like 9 30 oh my gosh I slept at like 12 and I thought I was the coolest kid out there but now it's like the more you sleep the more lucky you are especially in like these times when everything is is uncertain I feel like I get really stressed about like the unknown not knowing what to expect and that especially gets worse during lockdown period when you know we don't know when this is ever going to ease we don't know when we can go back to school and stuff when when things are going to go back to normal I guess which is something that can be stressful for a lot of people and I think it's just really important to like realize that like you're not the only one dealing with stress I'm yeah. sure a lot of people in Ruth if not all <laughs> all undergo the same problems, all um, experience stress at one point in their Mm -hmm. lives. And I think it's really important, you know, just acknowledge that and think I've got people around me. I'm surrounded by a community that also experiences the same struggles as me. Uh, Like I think at James Ruth, just from my personal experience, it's been kind of polarizing because you can be surrounded by people who get like me, get stressed really easily. And then we talk about our stresses and sometimes it just builds on and on on yeah. top of each other and just amplifies everything whereas like there's another half that can be really good at controlling the stress but also I feel like some people hide their stresses as well which isn't good either because it's just keeping everything in and that can make someone like me who's who gets stressed really easily feel like there's something wrong with me when there isn't it's like perfectly valid you know so yeah guys we're all stressed people and it's perfectly fine and we're just 
all on this journey together, you know? I think it, that's why it's important to have really good friends to help you, especially in stressful periods. And even if you do feel like you don't have like a steady support system where you can rant and like open up your stresses about, I'm sure the prefects, all of them are down to talk. And I know Ameline and Leel are also very friendly, very nice people. <laughs> and I'm sure they would be down to <laughs> be friends with you guys. Well. Maybe we can talk about some ways we personally can like deal with our stresses and maybe some tips does anyone want to start that off okay usually when I feel stressed the most is probably during exam week like I mentioned but the thing is I still haven't figured out a way how to deal with that stress back in like the earlier years of high school I did not prepare at all for my exams I usually did everything last minute yeah but like as the years have been going on I've slowly have been getting better like time management as well and getting the work done and getting my notes done beforehand which I think is super important but still like I get I pull all night as still during exam week so I feel like year seven would be the year where like it's you're new to high school and people are I mean the kids are like oh we have to do good in our exams and mm. like a lot of the kids yeah. think that doing well in your exam is really important because it will like impact your later life but in actuality it doesn't really just year seven so I think in year seven I probably felt a lot of stress even though it didn't really matter well for me I think in year seven and eight I wasn't actually very stressed out but as the years go on and I realize things do start counting that's when I get a bit more stressed Mm. Whereas in year seven and eight, I would tell myself, oh, it doesn't matter. It's all practice. Yeah. No, I agree with that because I transferred to Roos, right? So like in year seven, eight, I had no worries. I was like, you know what? Life is good. And then I came to year nine and Roos is definitely a different environment to other schools, like in a good way, as in like you're constantly pushed and you're constantly motivated by the kids around you to like do well, right? But then when you're like yeah. suddenly... um met with that I feel like that got really stressful for me because then like studying became a lot more serious you know my marks mattered more like my reports became something I was like worried about and stuff I remember in a year meeting Mr. NG was like stress can sometimes be a good thing okay at first I was like what the heck does that even mean what are you talking about stress is not a good thing like that stress stresses me out but then I was thinking about it and I think for example deadlines personally for me like stress me out a lot because it means I need to get this done by a certain time or I'm going to get penalized or something. like I get stressed about deadlines because the connotations I put around deadlines are always negative but if you think about yeah. it it means that you know what like after this deadline I know I have this assurance knowing that you know what by this time everything's done I finished everything and from then I'm like s- stress-free but if you think about it that way it kind of changes your perception on stress I feel like you do need a little bit of stress to get you motivated if I lived with no stress guys I would not be getting stuff done like and I think it's just important to find that balance I guess which I haven't yeah. found yet but is it just me or after an extreme intense exam block or after submitting many assignments and then you're carefree and doing whatever you want with your time is it just me or do you feel guilty is there like this yeah. voice at the back of your head that's telling you <laughs> Lael get up go do some work but you know what's funny when I'm in bed and I'm not doing work I'm stressed out about not doing work but I'm too stressed to start doing work I'm stressed about the fact that I'm not doing work but then work makes me stressed so then like I don't know what to do I feel like that's a problem I should probably try and fix I think it's just the fact of like getting up and doing the work which stresses you out I have to get started on this yeah but I don't want to and that's stressing me out yeah and it just builds on Mm. how are you guys like coping with all the work during lockdown I picked up some good habits so every morning I meditate for 10 minutes and I know but like literally it helps so much Mm. try it out it is so good maybe we should pick up meditation guys it has changed my life and then I've been doing this for like ever since like two years ago but I just walk whenever like I want to I just like walk a lot and then that can range from like 15 minutes to maybe even an hour just like by myself I love walking yeah and well and what? do you guys have any ways you guys- well I absolutely hate walking and I hate sports so I love staying inside I like <laughs> no no that used to be honest me, but trust me well the only time I actually do go out is when like my mom forces me to go on a walk <laughs> she keeps telling me Emily you've been cooped up in the house for too long blah 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 but 
I actually like staying inside, even though I do miss seeing my friends and stuff mm-hmm. at school. Like that's the downside of lockdown. <laughs> play elf. I feel like staying inside, there's like the upsides to it. Like you pick up a lot of hobbies as well. I guess you get to spend a lot of me time and you have more time for yourself rather than oh God, the please, whole stress please, please, of what, like me me time means because I hear it all the time but I'm like what does that actually mean I mean I guess it's just enjoying being by yourself but then like during lockdown it's it's so relaxed and I feel like I don't feel as much stress in lockdown than I do in school mm-hmm. especially like during this assignment period and stuff mm-hmm. I'm not feeling that much stress as I should be but <laughs> anyway <laughs> That's a good thing. Stress-free life is good. How about you? Well, there is more free time online. But in terms of me time, I don't I don't think I get as much as Ameline having four <laughs> siblings. But to reduce the noise, because as you can imagine, it does get very noisy at home yeah. and it makes it very difficult to do math. I do wear some <laughs> noise-cancelling headphones. It I works. Think. Really? It blocks out all the noise. Maybe I should get noise-cancelling headphones. Yeah, but like I definitely agree with what Ameline said. Lockdown looks different on everyone. I am like the biggest homebody ever. Like I'm more of a home person than I'm like a going out person. So lockdown has honestly been so chill for me. Like with like the whole tips, I think it's important to just find what works for you. Like what Sambo said, she does meditation. Yeah. That's her stress <laughs> releasing thing and layouts. Noise cancelling headphones is her way of releasing stress and family, you know, just um staying up and doing whatever she wants. That's her way of releasing stress. And I think it's important to just like find what helps with you. And I think lockdown is a good opportunity to do that since you've got so much mm. time in your hands on that note like we have a lot of junior listeners right how many times have you heard this oh my gosh you're only in year seven it doesn't even matter <laughs> oh my gosh right and when you're in year seven you're like what do you mean yeah. you know but yeah. when you when you're in like year 11 or year 12 you're like oh my gosh they were right like what advice would you give to year sevens or like year eights just anyone younger than us I think it's still important to study hard try your best but you definitely shouldn't get caught up on not performing as well as you would have liked because Mm. it is all a learning experience for year 11 and 12 and Year seven definitely doesn't matter. Even <laughs> when you get to year eight, you realize, oh, wow, my bad Latin mark really doesn't matter. <laughs> I guess in the perspective of like year seven or eight, when you get told that it doesn't matter for you, it does matter because yeah. you're year seven and doing your exam, this is going to impact your like yeah, exactly. your results yeah. or your grade. It just flies through your head and like whatever. I mean, no, not whatever. It matters. Yeah. That's but the message in, terms of like, in terms of like advice I guess just relax I suppose <laughs> just remember like I know I sound really cliche right now but just remember at the end of the day it's not gonna matter I seem like a hypocrite the reason why we say it doesn't matter is because we've experienced it we've already experienced year seven but for kids who are in year seven that it's their first time doing year seven so like obviously it matters so much to them like when I was in year seven my geography assignment was like the most important thing in my life like, I needed to do well in my geography assignment or it was just that or nothing but then I think something that's really important to remember is you're gonna walk out of high school with like more than just an ATAR I sound like a grandma but like I think it's just important to like have a good time and I feel like just remember the most cliche sayings are probably the ones that ring the most true yeah, you know they're cliche for a reason what I would say to year sevens is like what all of you guys say your marks don't matter but what you should be doing with with your time is like recognizing how you deal with stress like Leo said who are your good friends and who you can rely on during those tough times also another thing try to find and keep in contact with mentors I think that is so important just because a lot of the times you can feel like really alone. For me, finding a mentor is probably the most important thing. But you know how two years ago, the High Achievers Assembly, it got cancelled. So then Miss Powell sent us the High Achievers speeches. It was just their script of what they would tell to like younger people, right? Just reading those, it just made me feel so much like less alone. And just knowing that everyone goes through this, like it doesn't matter if you're a genius or like it doesn't matter because you all go through that. And it's just made me feel so much better. But like, I feel like having a mentor as well, it doesn't necessarily need to be someone older. Anyone you can rely on, anyone you can talk to is really important, especially during high school. 
Hmm. Who would that be for you? For me? Um, yeah. Like a lot of people. Well, number one, there's like my friends. And then there's like, you know, like the people I meet through grade sport, the people I meet through like clubs, the people I meet in class, just anyone. As long as you have someone that you feel like you can go to when you need help or you can reach out to. If you just have just one person, you know, guys, quality over quantity. Like just one person, that's more than enough. Like seriously. Yeah, like, um, I yeah, yeah. Sorry. What about For you? me, if I had to choose a mentor, it'd actually probably be Lael. Like, I'm Aww. not even saying that because even though she's here, I'm actually being serious. Like, out Aww. of everyone, if I had anyone to, like, go to for my problems, I'd probably say Lael. Guys, I feel like I'm oh. watching, like, a proposal. <laughs> You're like, I'm oh, sorry. Thank you, yeah. Emily. <laughs> yeah, like, she's just so hardworking and dedicated and everything. And whenever I have any problems, whether it be, like, academic or any problems at home, I would always go to her, to be honest. Oh, Especially during lockdown as well, because we spent a lot of time online and through messages and video calls. Through that, we tend to even speak a little bit more than we usually do at school. Well. Thank you as well for all your support during lockdown and in general. No problem. You're, you're a great mentor to me as well. <laughs> Who's your mentor, Sambo? Like literally, this is going to sound cliche, but definitely my mom. She just gets me through a lot. And I'm really lucky to have like such amazing emotional support because I am bad at being alone by myself. I am not good at dealing with stress either. So I just go to her with all my troubles. And I think it's important to just tell junior years I know you hear this a lot from like the principal or your year advisors, but you can literally go and talk to them about what you're feeling. Just like the number of teachers I have cried in front of, they get me through a lot as well. So on the topic of like crying, I think it's so important <laughs> to like release your emotions because after I cry, I feel so good. If that's what helps you get through it, then I feel like you're like, just cry as much as you want. Are you guys heavy cryers? Like, do you guys, are you guys like, just don't cry? I, I suppose I have my moments. I don't, I don't really think about it that often. Like, when I feel like crying, I cry. I'm like, okay, I'm done. <laughs> after you cry, you realize, oh, maybe it's not that big of a deal. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Wait, how many uh, times have you guys cried at school? Oh, uh, for me, I remember there was this one time. It was just the stupidest thing. Okay. Um, in year seven, we had some out of school thing where we had to go in groups and one of my friends wasn't in my group and I was just so upset over it. It wasn't even that. I wasn't even bothered over that. I think it was just like just the overload of, oh my God, this is just too much for me. And I think I started bawling in front of, I think it was Miss Annette's. And then she was like, all right, do you want to go to the bathroom and just like, you know, clean yourself up? The bathroom, I was just, oh my God, did that seriously just happen? It was just so embarrassing. But it wasn't even over, like, what had happened. It was just all of it just coming to me. Literally, when I was in year nine, like, before I was going to transfer to Ruth, I had this rule, I'm never going to cry at school. I've had some traumatic experiences in year six and primary school <laughs> when I cried at school and just never ended up good. So I was like, okay, you know what? Ruth, new school, new life. You're not going to cry at school. And I was doing so good until my year nine yearly maths exam. I... <laughs> got my paper back and so I was like facing the back looking at the whiteboard <laughs> and then like this really nice friend came to me and was like oh my gosh Yunji, are you okay and I was like yeah I'm fine I just have allergies when it was so clear that I was crying <laughs> fine I've got allergies and then I walked outside and I started bawling my eyes out in the corridors luckily I also don't worry Emily I cried in front of Miss Sammy so she took me down to the farm and we picked some lemons from the lemon tree and I had a nice little therapy session with Miss Sammy so that was my first time crying at Ruth you know what I wish it was my first and last time but don't worry I've cried more than that afterwards so I feel like it's always mats that gets people really worked up I think it was last year I think nearly every girl in my class went to the bathroom and cried like yep. I was feeling really upset about my marks I was like okay time to go to the bathroom to cry and I go on there and there's 20 other girls <laughs> it's like, a bonding experience um, well if we're talking to them as well we've cried at Ruth I'll share a story about oh, when I was you. in year six I didn't actually cry but I was about to cry I was very upset so I had we had this thing at school where there was a buddy bed mm -hmm. and people from other grades would come if they didn't have any friends to play with and sit on the buddy bed and then I would go and play with them at lunchtime, right? Oh, yeah. This boy knew three. And I had been playing with him for about three or four days. Yeah. And we were, we were playing Pokemon cards, right? Yeah. He told me how to play and we were playing. But I, I had never played Pokemon cards before. 
-hmm. and I was really bad like horrible Mm -hmm. and on the fourth day he comes up to me and I was like oh you ready for another game and he's like I'm sorry Leo I think I'm just gonna not play with you you're not very good I think you had to sit on the buddy bench do you guys have any tips and tricks or like any advice for the younger grades in terms of like how you can in terms of like organization and stuff Mm -hmm. and just getting through school I mean I feel like I'm still struggling with that I think I'm the one that needs (laughs) there is one thing to have the hard way and that is to um not let your work pile up Mm -hmm. so I think we've all had experience where we get a bunch of comments but we realize oh it's not due right now set yourself like small goals with like to-do lists I saw on YouTube like there are these five tips that can help change your life and I was like oh my gosh I want to change my life so (laughs) I clicked it and the first thing was make a to-do list every day like the first thing you do when you wake up so I was like all right bet so I would like make these to-do lists with like a hundred things to do And like, it would be like really big tasks, like finish like three chapters of Cambridge Maths and like, I don't know, like write two whole draft essays. Obviously I wasn't going to finish them, but then I started writing like really small tasks, like finish five questions of maths, finish my introduction for my English essay. Those are so much easier to tap. And once like the box off, I feel so satisfied. I'm like, damn, you and Jill, damn, you're really on the grind these days, aren't you? Like, <laughs> finishing five questions and writing an introduction essay. I feel like that really helped. This isn't so much organization, but still like anxiety. You know how you said that maths questions stressed you out? English stresses me so much out. Like what I realized is that you're probably like, this is so hard. I keep making silly mistakes all the time. Mm-hmm. For English, it's like, oh my gosh, I can never get the sentence perfect. Or like, it doesn't matter if I spend two hours or 10 hours on this. I never get anything done. So what you have to do is just reflect. Why do you feel so much resistance against the subject? And for me, it was just like perfectionism. Like maybe like for maths, you're like, oh my gosh, I have to do this entire page of maths questions. But when you like look at it from afar, because a lot of the times you're exaggerating. One page of maths isn't that much, right? That's why you hate doing it or you're so scared to do it to even start right but once you like say like okay this is why I'm feeling this way these are the negative judgments just let it go guys and then it's so much better with the English thing so you know how for English essays you do like drafts I had this thing where my draft one had to be perfect it had to be the most perfect thing in the whole wide world and if I didn't like one bit about it I would spend hours trying to fix it then I realized what's the point of doing five drafts if I'm gonna try and make my draft one perfect what I do now is like my draft one I literally word vomit whatever I want I don't care if it sounds like a kindergartner's work I don't care if it does not abide the English rules I just write what I want to write and then after I have something at least it gives me something to work on and then from there I perfect it bit by bit I go draft two okay this sentence literally does not make sense I'm gonna have to fix it up if you just keep like working bit by bit like that I feel like it's easier I think it's when you're especially when you're doing past papers for an mm-hmm. exam and then knowing that you put a lot of effort into it and then doing the exam and then getting your results back and it's just so heartbreaking I don't know for me it's just awful And I guess that's what makes me hate maths, I guess. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's not the fact that I hate doing it. It's just me putting all that effort into it and then just not getting the results that I feel like I deserve. I feel like I just like spiritually connected with you for a second. (laughs) You've literally put my experience in maths in words. Like that is literally how I feel. And sometimes as well, the subject that you don't put a lot of effort into and you get back results and you do especially well in it. You're like, how does that logic work though? Yeah, like... I think if you do get a bad mark, it shouldn't deter you from studying for that subject. You shouldn't get too hung up over it or too upset by it. But you should try and let it motivate you to study a bit more. I'm going to reflect all the way back when I did my year 8 maths. Half <laughs> uni. It was a very big failure. Mm-hmm. But um, instead of getting really upset by it, which at first I was very upset, considering I did study very hard for it, it just pushed me to study a lot more. Mm-hmm. And then I did see that studying pay off later in my year. And I do think that that bad mark really helped me improve in year eight and work harder. And it taught me a lesson early on. So don't let your bad mark deter you from studying for that subject. For that year eight half really, I went overseas that time. So <laughs> I was told that like I didn't have to do, Yeah, during that period. So I didn't have to do my half yearly. So I was like, I, ca- I came back to school. It's like, damn, I don't yeah. have to do anything. Cool. I go to ag because it was like my first class. And then Miss Zoo walks in 
and she's like Emily you're doing the math exam right now well she didn't say right like that now? but she's like yeah right oh. now and I hadn't oh studied God. anything and she like locks me in a room just like do the exam right now and have for anything dude I, I um, had nightmares I, about that that is nightmare <laughs> type scenario <laughs> and it was so traumatic I was sitting there like I don't know anything bro but I feel like that's the best part at junior school in junior school failing is like part of the process you're allowed to fail like what Lael said getting disappointed push Lael to work harder and it obviously paid off and I feel like that's what's so good about like junior school especially yeah. like, just learn from the failure I guess how do you guys deal with the overload being prefects and execs as well for Mm -hmm. social justice clubs can you give us any advice now that we're execs as well personally for me though the role of an exec and the role of a prefect I don't think of it as a burden it's something I genuinely really wanted to do and it's something I was really passionate about when I think of it I don't get stressed out at all even if there's so many things I have to do and so many events I have to organize it's really fun for me that's my way of releasing stress oh my gosh just touching on that I feel like it's so important to get involved in the school in year seven I regret not doing anything because I was scared of not getting in I wasn't going to make it into the team like a sports team or like I'm not going to make it into stuff so I was so scared of that that I didn't even try out in the first place once you get involved in the school and you like find a community or like something you really enjoy doing like that literally raises the quality of school life by so much even if I've got exams even if I got stuff like that on the fact that I've got clubs to look forward to the fact that I've got a role a leadership role that I get to take part in that is so stress relieving to me I heard so many people say guys get involved in the school like it's really good to get involved in the school like that went into one ear and went out the other because like I don't really get it but like once you do start getting involved in school I understand why people say that you meet new people with same interests it gives you something to look forward to yeah, yeah. like if for me in year seven and eight I didn't wasn't really involved in many clubs not yeah. because I was scared like UNG I think I just wasn't bothered mm-hmm. but then I mentioned this in my UNICEF exec speech but I regretted it so much because it really opens your mind up to so many things and it's like what Lael said like it's something to look forward to um well, do you want to talk about like stories from school Okay, this one is so embarrassing. It was a free period, so I get to go home early. I was on the 550. I had my earphones in. I thought I looked so cool. I was listening to vibey music. I was looking out the window like a mysterious person. I arrived at Epping Station, right? And so the doors opened and I need to leave, right? I like stepped out, but it was the bus and then there was a gap and then it was the pavement. I was stepping out, but my foot got stuck in the gap. I literally, like my hands went in the air and I like barely flopped onto the floor. Like I was just sprawled on the floor for good three seconds and I was like no I can't get up from this like this is too embarrassing like I just can't go to school anymore and people were like looking at me and like what is she doing and my earphones were like on the other floor and I had a watch and my watch was like thrown onto the other floor my bag at that time was really heavy so I tried lifting myself up but it was weighing me down I was literally like a turtle like I couldn't get up I was like struggling to get up I got up had to casually grab my watch and casually grab my earphones and like just dust myself on and like pretend that that like will all happen for a reason and it was probably like the most embarrassing moment of my life I'm just curious how did your watch manage to fly off (laughs) that's how bad the fall was my watch was literally on the other side I don't even know how that happened but it happened and after that whenever I'm walking off the bus I always take five seconds to just like prepare myself I'm like Yunji put your right foot out your left foot out and just walk because I refuse to go through the same experience as that again that was so embarrassing Sambu do you have any I'm sure you have at least one embarrassing moment actually I do so basically I was at peer support care and you know Mr. Singh he's such a cool guy I was a peer support manager and then I had like 15 kids in one group right Mm -hmm. and we were abseiling and then they were like oh for some reason I was just too tired I was just sitting in line with Mr. Singh right Mm -hmm. and then like we started like talking about deep stuff I asked him about his marriage and then he was like you know it's really important to just really work with your spouse to you know just really understand each other get through the tough times like all these deep stuff and then he was like I know I was just about like wow so you seem you seem so happy in life I wish I could be as emotionally strong as you and he was like yeah yeah he was just giving me like really good like counseling therapist talk right I forgot what he said it was like you know life is very short you never know when it's going to be over so just really enjoy it you know just really work hard to be happy and then I just started crying <laughs> <laughs> while the people were absolutely <laughs> while 15 year seven kids who i meant to be a role model in front of yeah i saw the bullying i'm an ugly crier and i was just crying i was just so touched 
And then he was like, we just saw it and staring at me. He's like, oh my God. He was like, oh, crying in the back. Yeah. Are you okay? yeah. I was like, so no, 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 no. I'm really happy. I'm really touched. That's why I'm crying. I'm not sad, okay? I'm just crying. And not even my face gets ugly. My voice gets ugly as well. Yeah, in front of me. <laughs> kids and and in front of the camp like supervisors as well you know an experience any similar stories guys i cry a lot when reading and watching movies like it, it gets really okay it gets really embarrassing sometimes i try to hide that i'm crying like we'll be watching a disney movie as a family <laughs> And then I'll just randomly start bawling my eyes out. <laughs> no, that reminds me. Once I went to the cinemas to watch, do you guys know The Good Dinosaur? I went with my little sister. And so like the rest of the audience, they were like four, five-year-old kids, right? I was like in primary school or something. And I went in and there's this scene like, and oh my gosh, that hit my, that hit my head. In a kid's movie? Yeah, like yeah. it was like, it was so emotional for me. I started bawling my eyes out none of the other kids were crying I was just I was the only grown kid there bawling my eyes out about a dinosaur movie and you could see people like being like what is this wrong with her like remember my movie there's this full ass grown kid crying and yeah that was really embarrassing Junji I'm not even joking I cried in that scene oh my <laughs> gosh I found a fellow cry it was so sad right literally I was so amazed that these kids were crying like oh I remember so when I was reading Harry Potter I won't say which character but one of the characters died I was in primary school and I was reading in my room and then one of the characters died and then I, I was a mess I went out to my mom I couldn't even form a sentence she's like what's wrong and I couldn't even tell her why I was crying <laughs> have you guys watched any like interesting movies or tv shows during lockdown well, I've watched this amazing TV show during lockdown. I've been watching it with my little sister. It's Alvin and the Chipmunks, <laughs> but made into a TV show. Every day after school, she comes up to me and I'll be doing my homework. And she comes up to me and she's like, Lael, when are you going to have a break? And I'm like, oh. I have a lot of work today and she's like okay when you're free just let me know time for <laughs> Alvin and the Chipmunks so really recommend it yeah I I started watching the k-drama is it penthouse or the penthouse it's really good I'm mad at explaining the tv show so I won't explain it but yeah really good go check it out Aline do you have any recs I feel like you would know a lot Lael and I have been reading this series called Shadow and Bone oh yeah I, I started think... watching a few episodes of it. it's pretty good Shadow and Bone the series is amazing I'm up to the third book right now yeah Emmeline finished it. Yeah. How's the, I, I'm um, getting a lot of like reading done because we're in lockdown good. right now. That's, is there anything have you guys else? been getting like a lot of reading done as well? Like have you read any recent books? Um, Whenever I tell people what kind of books I like, they always tell me I'm a grandma or that I'm really boring. But we won't. like <laughs> I love like autobiographies, non-fiction, like realistic historical fiction. I'm not going to lie, very controversial, not a big fan of fantasy. I feel like this is going to get me like blacklisted or something, but like I'm not a big fan of fantasies. I like listening to people's stories. You saying you don't like fantasy was like a knife through my heart. Hey, oh, you want to hear something else that might put a knife in your heart? <laughs> Oh no, I don't know if I can handle it. I've never finished the Harry Potter series. <gasps> Me too. <laughs> what? Please. How do you not finish the Harry Potter series? Like, it's just... Harry Potter. Well, like, I... yeah, I didn't say he died. Okay, I've read the Philosopher's Stone, like, five times. Because every single time I'm like, all right, you know what? I'm going to try and read the Harry Potter series. So then I read through, like, the Philosopher's Stone and I'm going to start the second book. And I'm like, no, nah, this is so boring. I can't do this. And then the next year I try again. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to get into Harry Potter. I read Philosopher's Stone and then I'm like, no, nah, I'm out. <laughs> the next year I start again because, like, I know back in year seven, Harry Potter was, like, the thing. If you don't tell me what house you're in and if you don't like tell me like, but i think there was a cycle called like pottermore or something yeah, and like, i just did not understand it it was the whole like primary school you know divergent yeah. hunger yeah. games the maze yeah. runner if you didn't read, I read it none you're, of you're those. i read none of those <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> really well for us it was a huge thing like if you didn't read any of those books like you were outcasted we tried okay yeah. we tried we tried <laughs> points for effort i feel like for me like you know how the whole primary school thing like i, I felt like i just jumped on the bandwagon and i felt 
felt obligated to read them because everyone else was. But still, I really enjoyed them and I love going online and doing this dumb quizzes like, which faction are you in? Or like, <laughs> which district are you in? Which demigod or whatever? Oh my gosh, which no. Which cabin I do you belong in? as well. BuzzFeed quizzes are the best. I remember I was so obsessed with getting Gryffindor. <laughs> I made like a hundred different Pottermore accounts. <laughs> So oh, I, I could get Gryffindor. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I did it once, like without having any background knowledge on like Harry Potter. And like, because like everyone was like, which house are you in? Like everyone's doing that. So I was like, oh my gosh, like I want to do this as well. And then I got like Hufflepuff. And then I went up to my friends and I was like, guys, guess what? I did the quiz. Do you want to know what I got? And I was like, I got Hufflepuff. I don't know. I don't know if Hufflepuff is like a bad house. I didn't really know what's going on. But they were like, Hufflepuff? Like, you're in Hufflepuff? Like, I'm in like Gryffindor. And then I was like, oh, what? So then I got really self-conscious. So I was trying manipulating the answers so that I could try to get Gryffindor. But I never got Gryffindor, so. I did the Pottermore quiz like back in year four or five or something. And I got Slytherin and I was distraught. I When it flashed into my screen, I, I was like on the verge of tears. Like I couldn't <laughs> believe what was happening to me. And then I did the, the Patronus quiz. I got a turtle. And I was like, how is it even possible? I actually got a turtle. I was... <sighs> <laughs> anyway it still impacted me yeah and I haven't done like one of those quizzes since then because I'm still worried about getting Slytherin. Yeah. Slytherin I mean you know how you guys haven't um read Harry Potter mm -hmm. and how that marks the end of our friendship I'm not sure if you guys saw in the newsletter recently how they cut down those trees on the hill from the oval that goes down to the gym. They cut down all those trees to build the new sport facility. Oh, and really? then I told Emmeline, I'm, I'm afraid that's the end of our friendship. <laughs> <laughs> those trees were the roots of, of our friendship. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> We've been talking for like so long. I think that wraps up our third episode of Roost on Record. And I know we went really off topic from talking about like school studies and stress to like Pottermore and like our embarrassing moments. But I feel like that shows that it's really important and really fun to stay connected with your friends even during lockdown. And, you know, you guys can all have your own little Zoom meetings with your friends if you want. And yeah. Yeah, thanks for joining us, guys. Just remember, we're all human. We're all on this journey to like battling stress and, you know, just learning how to deal with it. So yeah, feel free to always reach out and definitely give us suggestions as to what you would like to hear.